Section four is going to go into some mathematical foundations, and the things that we're going to cover are the role of descriptive statistics, or getting some information to get an overview of a summary data set. Then we're going to talk about random sampling, or ways to look at a data without having to go through every single piece. Then we're going to cover elementary probability, your basic mean, medians, and modes, and some of the ways that you can calculate those. And then we're going to go and we're going to look at Bayes' theorem, which is an advanced statistical technique to see the relation between different elements and each other. Now we're going to talk a little bit about descriptive statistics or some basic stories that the data can tell. And what we're going to cover in this video is the role of descriptive statistics and some types of descriptive statistics that we'll be using. And then within Java applications of descriptive statistics, we're going to be talking a little bit about stream terminals and summary statistics so that we can do a little bit of analysis without always needing a third party library such as Apache Commons Math, which has a descriptive statistics class file in it that you can also use. Now in terms of descriptive statistics, it really just means a way of describing the data. And there's a couple different types that you can use. One is quantitative descriptions, which are things like mean, median, mode, and what's the variance off of each of those. And then you could also summarize data using visual summarization. So we'll cover visualizations a little bit in later videos and future sections. But ultimately, both of these are our ways of describing the types of data that you have within a particular data set. Now, Java Eight comes with an element called stream summary statistics that at the end of a stream you can use something called collectors.collect and there's a method called summarizing double summarizing int that will ultimately return a value of int summary statistics double summary statistics or long summary statistics and what each of these elements will give you assuming you map whatever you want into the double or proper data set that it has so int for int double for double and long for long and these will give you things like the count, the mean, the median, the mode, or some basic summary data of all of the elements that took part of that Java stream. Now to look at these int summary statistics, or even the double summary statistics, you'll notice they have a method called int get average, get sum, get count, and a number of other getters that you can use to evaluate the statistical properties. And if you want to go into detail about how to use the Java streams, there's an excellent tutorial by Benjamin Winterby that he published on his website shortly after Java 8 came out as a way of recapping what you can do with streams overall as well as covering these int summary statistics or double summary statistics in terms of the data that you saw. Now we're going to move forward into a demo and cover descriptive statistics example so that we can look at some of the ways that you'll want to use these particular classes. So if we switch over to the IDE here, we have descriptive statistics example open. And what we're going to do in this element is to go generate a whole series of random numbers and then go through and produce some level of statistics to describe what took place within those numbers. So in this case, I'm going to call a method called random.ints, and I'm going to generate 100 different random numbers. And then I'm going to loop through each of those, and I can go through it parallel form. So here, ints takes a stream size and a random number bound, so we don't want to go outside of this range. And that's how we're just going to generate a whole series of random numbers. And then I'm going to spin through these in a parallel fashion, because I don't really need to do it. None of these are sequential operations. And there's a function that we could call called peak, where we can actually look at what the number is at each element at the time. And then we're going to map each of these numbers into an integer just so that we have that so that we can call summary statistics and just get those basic int summary statistics. Now down at the bottom, we're going to say mean is stats.getAverage, max is stats.getMax, and min is of course stats.getMin, count and sum, and a couple other different statistical properties that uh, are part of this int summary statistics. And we can use this on any stream. And then, yep, so there we go. We got the average, max, min, count. And then we're just going to print each of these in a nice format so that we can take a look at them. And if we scroll down a bit, there's nothing special about our format function. We just pass it in as a format string so that we can say what it is and then print the actual number. So if I go to run this application, which I've already run in the background, what we can see is the descriptive statistics. The average of uh, numbers between 1 and 1,000 is, in this case, about 460. So that's relatively close because between 0 and 1,000, it's, I'd expect, about 500. This is pretty close. We generated maximum 975, minimum of 2. We had 100 numbers that we went through, and they summed up to about 46,000. So that's a relatively easy way to spin through and just get a quick summary description of what all your elements were within a stream.
Now these descriptive statistics, one of the reasons that we use that parallel stream is that they're not dependent on each other. So if you take a bunch of numbers and you go to add the mean, median, or mode, it doesn't matter really in what order they occurred. So in this case, parallelization is okay. And the, what you'll find is that the peak method, although it's very nice to be able to look at some things inside the console sometimes, the console is legible. So that inadvertently flips a parallel stream back into a serial stream because we want to make sure that elements are written out to the console in a sequential order so that words don't just start showing up in the middle of other words. So anytime you have a parallel stream, you want to watch any case where you do any output to system.out there because that system.out is actually synchronized and serial so that people are able to read it. So just be a little careful if you go and take a look at the values within the stream as you're iterating through anything that is a parallel stream.